Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in today's video we are going to talk about exophthalmos. In these patients the bulbus is protruding anteriorly out of the orbita. And as you can notice also the palpebral fissure is widened. This is already pretty much the definition of the disorder. It is a symptom rather than an own disease and its underlying cause has to be found and treated. Why this is necessary, we will talk about later. Exophthalmos is also called protrusio bulbi. The diagnosis of this disorder is done by anamnesis and physical examination, or also by the help of a few devices. One of those is called exophthalmometer, it looks a little bit like a ruler with two perpendicular measuring aids. The protrusion of the eyeball is measured with it. The normal range is from 12 to 21 mm, with the average for women being 15 to 17 mm and for men 16 to 18 mm. Also the difference between the right eye and the left eye is measured. If it is greater than 2 mm, it is considered abnormal. If a hemorrhage or neoplastic disease is suspected to be the cause of the exophthalmos, a plain X-ray, MRI or CT can be obtained to diagnose and treat these. Which symptoms do patients describe that are affected by protrusio bulbi? Usually they describe diplopia, which is more commonly known as double vision. Xerophthalmia, which is the dryness of the cornea, which, depending on the degree or, and severity, can be accompanied by ulceration or inflammation of the cornea, as well as the sensation of pressure, pain and heat. Causes of exophthalmos are generally divided into four groups. The first is inflammatory disorders of the orbita. These include orbital phlegmone, sinus cavernosus thrombosis, or pseudotumors of the orbita. The second group are vascular anomalies. Those include hematomas of the orbita and trauma, or the arteria ophthalmica and vena ophthalmica, or alternatively, the cavernous sinus are injured. This often leads to a pulsating exophthalmus where the systolic pulse can be seen and felt in the eye. This can lead to the atrophy of the optic nerve. The third group is comprising all neoplastic and tumor growths in the area of the orbita. The fourth and last group involves endocrine orbitopathies as Graves' disease and other autoimmune disorders concerning the thyroid gland. Not every patient's eyes are affected in the same way. This is due to six different stages in which exophthalmos can present. The first stage is the least severe one. It presents with the Dollermeyer phenomenon, which is the upwards pushing of the superior eyelid, giving free a larger surface of the bulbus. The other sign for the first stage is the Möbius sign, which describes the difficulty in convergence of the eye, so difficulty closing the eye. In the second stage, the connective tissue of the eye is involved. This is seen by swelling of the lid, edema of the conjunctiva, which can lead to the elevation of the conjunctiva over the level of the sclera, photophobia and increased lacrimation. In stage 3, the deformation of the eyeball can be observed. Stage 4 presents with diplopia and blurry vision, due to blocking and impairment of the function of the muscles of the eye. In stage 5, patients experience dryness, turbidity and ulceration of the cornea due to improper closing of the eyelids. Stage 6, the most severe stage, includes involvement of the optic nerve, which leads to progressive blindness. In the last part of our presentation, I want to take a look at a clinical case. In this case, a 13-year-old boy goes to his GP office. 
your complaints of weight loss, restlessness, insomnia, increased appetite, chest pain and pain in the eyes, especially upon attempt of closing them. The general examination reveals an enlarged, an enlarged thyroid gland and protrusion of the bulbus out of the orbiter. Exophthalmometry reveals a measurement of 20 mm. The laboratory results show a decrease in TSH and significant elevation of FT3 and FT4. This patient presents with all the classical features of Graves' disease and autoimmune hyperthyroidism. The exophthalmos is thought to be due to inflammation and swelling of the vitreobulbar tissues, as well as proliferation and antibody-antigen complex deposition. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and if you want to support our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.